dollars, Something. and I won a year's supply of turtle racks. <laughs> <laughs> and you went on to greater things. It's nice oh, to have I don't you know. back. <laughs> that was pretty nice. Do you know your partner, Scott Richards? We just met. Hi, Scott, Scott, what do you do, sir? Yes, I'm a seminary student and a part-time youth minister in Agora, California. Nice to have you here, sir. It's good to Robert meet you. Robert Mandan, you have, um, <clears throat> over the years, been responsible for giving away a lot of our money. Are you ready to do it again? I surely am. Say hello to uh, Janet. Is it Gleason? That's right. As in Jackie? That's right. No relation? No. What do you do, <laughs> Janet? I, uh, I'm a waitress at, in Corona del Mar. We're very happy to have all of you here. Wish you all a lot of good luck. Let me explain how you can win $25,000 in less than a minute. We play two games every day. Now, if you win the first game, you go to the big pyramid board over there and you try for $10,000. No matter what the outcome is, if you win the second game as well, then you have a chance at a grand total of $25,000. Let me repeat it. First game, you try for $10,000. If you win twice, you go over there and try and win $25,000. The subjects are all over here on the board. I'll review them. And Constance, I'll ask you to pick one out in a second. First one up there is, if I were a rich man, the lovebirds, wine, women, and song, open wide, run for your life. It's all frills. And uh, Constance, what uh, strikes your fancy, if anything? Um, something tells me I should take run for your life. Run for your life. I don't uh, know no, why. no, no. Don't be pessimistic. Now, you remember how this works. You have a little private screen there. You'll have 30 seconds. You are to describe for your partner, in this case, these things associated with running. Things associated with running. Now, stand by. Ready? Go. Uh, not the night, but the day. No, early. Uh, morning. Uh, the sweat on your face is you. Perspiration. Take it. Uh, in the morning, you get ready to run, so you do these things. Stretches. Ready. Uh, the distance that you run is a... A uh, mile. Uh, the thing that you wear is your... Jogging suit? No, all the one piece out... Oh! One all right, piece... warm-ups. ...is called a... a sweat? A, um, when you run one of these races, like in Boston or New York... Marathon. Called, uh, you get a cramp in your leg. Oh, you got five out of seven. A little trouble with, uh, outfit. Outfit. That's extraordinary. Little little smidgen of outfit came out, which reminds me, the good old cuckoo has never left this over all these years. If you have a little follow-up along the way, if you, in that case, read part of the answer or give an inappropriate uh, clue, it goes boop, boop, and then we're talking, yes, I hear you, I hear you, fool. Right, it's five to nothing. I, I always thought you did that. I... Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> which one of these would you like? Uh, wine, women, and song. All right, please describe for your partner these things associated with wine. Janet, stand by for things associated with wine. Ready? Go. What it comes in. A bottle. Uh, where it's stored. In the cellar. Uh, the foreign country that it comes from. France. Uh, where you put them. Cases, yep. racks, wine racks. Uh, it contains the stuff that makes you drunk. Is, uh, alcohol. Uh, a white wine. Cabri uh, yeah, Chardonnay. Uh, white wine. Chardonnay, Chablis. Yes. Uh, the thing you pour it from, pour it in and then pour Decanter. it out of. Yes. You got it. Seven out of seven. Perfect score. Scott, they've uh, stepped ahead of you a little bit by a couple of points, but all is not lost. You can pick it up here. Which one would you like, sir? I think we'll go with open wide. Open wide. All right. Uh, let's see. Describe for Constance these things that go into the mouth, but they are not eaten. Things that go into the mouth, but they are not eaten. Ready? Go. Okay. This is to take your temperature. Thermometer. Uh, this is chewing. Gum. Uh, this is what you would smoke. Pipe. Uh, dental. Floss. Uh, what a baby has. Pacifier. Uh, this is a Benny Goodman played it. Uh, a clarinet. Uh, what a dentist gives you. A uh, shot of painkiller. Oh, uh, Novocaine. That's it. You got them all. It's 12 to 7. Great. I wish I gave it to you. I'm sorry. I was glad you did Nice race in the work here. Robert and Janet, you have If I Were a Rich Man, The Love Birds, and It's All Frills. Janet, what would you like? It's all frills. It's all frills. Describe for your partner these things that are ornamental. Things that are ornamental. Ready? Go. Okay, this is right here. Ring. This is uh, this right here. Hair. Uh, it's when you put it in a little iron and up in a roll. Curl. Yes. Okay, this is what a bride wears. Veil. This is, you tie it. Bow. Yes. Okay, this is a Hawaiian. Lay. This is a rabbit or a jacket made Shawl. out of, uh, it's the Fur. material, yes. Okay, this is a, uh, a certain kind of potato chip has ridges, and it also is a Dip. potato chip has ridges. Oh. <laughs>
I was as stuck on that one as you were. The score is 13 to 12. You're ahead at the moment, Robert, so we'll give the choice to Scott and Constance, and what will it be, please? I think we'll go with If I Were a Rich Man. All right, as you may recall, from times gone by at this point, you have a chance to give or receive. You have I think screen? I will give. All right, Constance, he's going to describe for you these things a millionaire has on his mind. Things a millionaire has on his mind. Ready? Go. Okay, this would be his attorney. It would be... Uh, Accountant. Uh, someone who represents him in court. Uh, lawyer. Okay, not sell, but... Buy. Okay, uh, oh. income? Property. Um, what you paid Tax. Uncle Sam? Okay, not stocks, but... Bonds. Okay, this would be land, property? Real estate. Okay, uh, not loss, but... Gain. What you make is Profit. your... Okay, uh, not, uh, impotent, but... Powerful. You got it, seven out of seven, man. Hopefully, uh, run by very quickly the significance of this score. It's 19 to 13. Janet and Robert, in order to go over to the winner's circle and try for $10,000, you've got to come up with seven out of seven. You've got to come up with 20 points in order to win this round. You've got the screen. Do you want to play it that way? Mm -hmm. Janet, describe for Robert these things in a love story. Things in a love story, they need 20 points. Ready? Go. All right, not Romeo, but... Juliet. Uh, this is what you play Violin. like this. Uh, this is a an, uh, uh, a writing that Emily Dickens writes. Novel. Them, and, uh, no, and it writes... Television City in Hollywood, this is the $100,000 Pyramid. Today's special guests are Teresa Danzel and from Hotel Nathan Cook. Your host is Dick Clark. <laughs> Charlie O'Donnell said it. It's the $100,000 Pyramid. Thank you ever so much. We're going to have fun this time around. Oh, such money we will give away. Look at this. Teresa's over there already plotting against the house. In your Christmas outfits, red and green, no oh, less. Yeah. Who is this lady? Nancy, Nancy Kosis? Yes, that's Nancy, right. Nancy, what do you do? I'm a freelance production coordinator. I do catalogs, brochures, things like that. You and I'm a mother and a wife. And... Well, I don't think you have enough to do. <laughs> Come over here in your spare time. Teresa, what do you, what do, you do in your spare time? Oh, I go to the movies, I go out to lunch, I go shopping. I know how to be a lady of leisure, let me tell you. <laughs> you you're an accomplished professional. Yes. Nathan, what are your hobbies? Um, two kids. That's enough. That'll keep, that'll keep you busy as you want to get. Kim Kantner, I, I, I possessed Kim to call you Kantner, because there's a famous guy in music called Kantner. You are Kim Kenter. Right. I beg your pardon. And you are what, a court reporter? Court reporter. Right. Is that tough? Um, yeah, it's it's not easy. There's an awful lot of rides on what you tap out there. Mm -hmm. and then yeah, just about so everything. So the subject at hand. Right. Right. How much money have you won here? Around seven thousand. I'm not sure exactly. You didn't have it written down no. there. <laughs> seven thousand four hundred to be That's exact. And right. Kim and Nancy, winner circle awaits you. These are the subjects. I'm waiting. Oilsville, the assembly room, sunrise, sunset. Just between us, happy hours. The Mystery 7 plays in the second half of the game. We all know the 7-11 comes up shortly. And, Teresa, where do you think it is? Just between us. All right, let's see. Okay. Describe for Nancy these things associated with secrecy. Things associated with secrecy. Ready. Go. Okay, when you run away to get married. You elope. Um, when you cheat on your husband, you have a wonderful... Affair. Yeah. Uh, you, this is your little book you write your secrets Your diary. In. Yeah. Uh, this is... You're talking to me. Whisper. Um, this is you commit a terrible... Crime. Yes. And, uh, an actor has someone who represents them. That's... An, an agent. Yeah. And, uh, this is, uh, you do this in a war, you have an, um, a little Battle. tree is a little, a little uh, tree is a little uh, tiny, uh, sprout twig. 
Happy hours. All right. Describe for Kim these things people enjoy. Things people enjoy. Ready. Go. Uh, you have this after dinner. You have uh, ice cream and stuff. Dessert. Uh, you, you're, you're not saving your... You're spending. Mm -hmm. uh, you have one of these. He asked us about it earlier. You have uh, your stamp collecting or... Oh, uh, hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we hold a nice... Job. We talk. Oh, we talk. We hold, mm -hmm. uh, And I pay you. Oh, that's a beautiful dress. I pay you. Uh, and uh, we have a, 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 a wonderful affair. We have a very, it's very, a rendezvous, it's uh, very uh, romantic. Mm -hmm. You'll, um, and I'll do, I'll do this to you. Uh, I bet you can't do that. That's me. All righty. Romantic and romance, they accepted. Score six up. Nancy, please. Uh, sunrise, sunset. All right, that's the one with the, the bonus situation. I know. I will. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Describe these things associated with the sun. Things associated okay. with the sun. Ready. Go. Uh, you lay out together. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a color. Orange, red. Yellow. Mm -hmm. And this goes around the center of the earth. It's real Equator. hot there. Mm -hmm. And this is a beam of sunlight. Mm -hmm. And you wear this. It's a hat with a brim in front Visor. only. Mm -hmm. And this is the islands off the uh, coast Hawaii. of... Right. And this is when the sun and the moon go in front and be back. Mm -hmm. That's called a bonus win of $1,100. Yeah. Yeah. Nice going. Kim. Uh, I'm waiting, please. I'm waiting. Uh, Nathan, these are words associated with the word late. Mm -hmm. Things okay. associated with the word late, I should have read. Things associated with the word late. Ready. Go. Okay, not dinner, but another so, word. Uh, breakfast, supper. Yeah. And this is not the end, but the... Beginning. Uh, another word. Start. Uh, right. And this is, I tell you, I'm really sorry. I'm, I apologize. Right. And this is a guy, he has the show after Johnny Carson. The, David Letterman. Right. And this is, I'm hurrying, I'm in a real... Rush. Right. And this is a type of itinerary or something, you have everything uh, your, on... Your date on your calendar, uh, on a... Um, you have... Uh, the trains aren't running on... Time, on appointment, on uh, schedule. Right. And this is, um, you have to put it off to the morning. Later. Uh, oh, look at this. We're still trailing by one point. Kim and Nathan. Um, Strategy is to get the one that you can run through and yeah. get seven of, and maybe they'll stumble on the other one. Oilsville. Oilsville. Describe these things associated with Texas. Mm -hmm. Things associated with Texas. Ready. Go. Uh, he's a guy with a hat. JR? No. Cowboy. Uh, this is uh, the, the, the water. The water. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an asp or a snake. Uh, and this is the capital. This is the Dallas, city. Fort Worth. Uh, and this is a kind of a, a dog. It's a wild dog out uh, in the uh, desert. Um, uh, uh, coyote. Uh, remember the Alamo. Uh, and a uh, herd is a herd Cattle. of. You got it. <laughs> this is how. How disciplined this man is. He's in the middle of a coyote howl. You get the answer and he goes, oh! oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. 1913. Nancy, you're going to give? Yes. Mm -hmm. You'd, uh, please describe these things in a factory. Things in a factory. You'll need 20 points. Ready? Mm -hmm. Go. Mm -hmm. uh, another word for car? Automobiles. Mm -hmm. uh, you join the... Club. No. Union. Uh, yes. And you take a little cigarette... Break. Mm-hmm. And this is a kind of... Um, uniform. Uh, yeah, it's a kind of uniform. Women wear them. It has Apron. usually has little um, gathering here, um, like a house coat. A robe of... Um, Pass it. Um, and this is, you work nine to five. It's your... It's your, it's your, your job, your time schedule. It's a little summer dress. Shift. Yes. Kim, you've got it by George. Let's go to the winner's circle and try for $10,000. Dean Minard, Karen Clear, Chris Agley are the three people involved in the $100,000 tournament that'll come up in a few weeks from now. They may not be the last three because Dean got up there by finishing this part of the game in 45 seconds. Karen did it in 50 seconds. Chris did it in 51. Last time around struck me we had people in the 32nd area, 30 and like 41. So all three of those people are not really all set. set.
unless the rest of you all go to sleep. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what we can do about that. We'll try to keep you awake here. For $10,000, try to go to the top of the pyramid as quickly as you can. Here is your first subject. Go. Uh, the strings, the frets, the hole, the frets, the neck, the strings, uh, the G-string. The... Oh, okay. Um, I'm a Mexican alcoholic drink. What, I... a tequila, what tequila says? Um, I have... Oh, what a margarita says? Um, a, a sunken treasure. Um, a lost Pirate. child. Uh, things uh, you search for, things you look for. Um, the morning mail. Things you collect, things you a gather. A catalog. Um, a new baby. Things you look at. Um, uh, a new baby. The, um, the morning mail. Things you uh, carry. I'll pass. Um, uh, and, uh, islands. Um, unknown islands. Things uh, that are discovered, things uh, that are explored. Uh, mapped islands. Um, Go ahead. Next one, next one. Um, uh... We'll go back to them. Okay. A newborn baby. Okay, things An you An obstetrician's carry. baby. Things you deliver. Yes, you got the last one. Okay. Then time ran out. He was going for something. Uh, let me try my favorite piece. Everybody at home does the same thing that I do over here. Probably thinks, I got the perfect loop. I'm not sure this is going to give to you. A sailor's course. Things you chart. Well, it was the perfect clue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's... Uh, you want to you want to give a shot to the last one? No, you do that one. <laughs> you do it so well. Irish tablecloth. <laughs> Things that so uh, well. made of lace. Uh, fancy napkins. Fancy napkins. Linens. Yeah. yeah there's your. There's another one. <laughs> See if you had three oh, yeah, it. and me on your team. <laughs> Two, three, four, fifty, five hundred dollars. We'll be right back. Oh. Yeah. Can we play? Team? <laughs> well, we've arranged a cozy little gathering of subjects over there. Everything is all set, and where are we? Kim has won uh, $500 in the winner's circle. What threw me was, Nancy, you'd won more money, and then I remembered it was bonus stuff. So, Teresa and Kim, you are a partnership there. Nathan, you and Nancy are the other side. And, Nancy, you've got to get some score on the board with either uh, of some of these subjects, I should say. The Pied Piper, here today, please check in. Give me a break. Airwaves, the Caddy Corner, and the Mystery 7 this time. We'll send you to Sydney, Australia. Oh, wow. That's a nice one. Nice, beautiful place. Where would you like to start this thing? Us? Yeah. Please check in. Please check in. All right? That's why she said it. Hotel? <laughs> what is it? You think it's hotel? Would we make it that easy? Because he's on hotel. Do you think we would have things in a hotel? Yeah. He... <laughs> You're right. <laughs> These are things you see in a hotel. <laughs> if you did not know by any chance, Nathan Cook plays Billy on Hotel, has been doing so for how many years? Oh, we're starting our fifth season. Man knows everything <laughs> oh, about no. hotels. There isn't anything about hotels Nathan Cook doesn't know. That's After true. all, he's been a star on That's Hotel true. for five years. He's going to have his own. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. These are things you see in a hotel. Ready. Uh, not the escalator, but the... Elevator. Uh, and you go and have a cocktail at the... Bar. Uh, and you have not a room, but it with a bedroom, Sweet. eh? Mm -hmm. uh, and you carry your suitcases or your... Luggage. Uh, and, uh, and, um, I play a security, the... House, Guard. The Detective. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the big room when you walk in the first... Lobby. Mm -hmm. uh, and you call, you ring down for... Room service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got it. <laughs> Thank you. You're treading on very thin ice there, old friend. Uh, Teresa. Caddy corner. Nah. These are things that cats do. Things that cats do. Ready. Go. They make a sound. Purr, meow. Uh, you do this to your eyebrows. Uh, uh, raise. The, another, a curl. Uh, they do this to their back. Arch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> These are their... Claws. Um, this is you do Cuddle. this to, Yeah. And uh, they're out on the... Prowl. Yeah. And they do this. <gasps> jump. Yeah, another word for Leap. jump. Leap. On, onto a... Onto a Pounce. Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, this is their husband or their... Spou uh, mate. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Nancy, what's your pleasure? Here today, gone to Sydney. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. 
Describe these things that became a fad. Things that became a fad. Ready, go. You put this around your waist and twist. Uh, Jane Fonda started this. Uh, calisthenics, uh, aerobics. Mm -hmm. And you do this to your hair Tease. to make it real curly. Uh, you, you give it, mm -hmm. Long Permanent? Uh -huh. And uh, the Fab Four. John, what? Paul, Ringo. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, they dye their hair and Pumps. they... Mm -hmm. And uh, long shorts, also Minis. islands. Uh. Off, islands off Florida. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. yeah. I knew they weren't bikini. I had them. You knew they weren't Largo. <laughs> 12 to 7. Kim? Long Airwaves, short. please. Airwaves. There it is. Oh, how they've been looking. I mean, Australia's a big place, folks. Hard to lose. All right. Take the score to 14 points, and you'll be off on a lovely trip. Here's your, uh, your time. Ready? And go. Okay, not perfume, but... Cologne. Right. And this is um, where your stove and everything, the room. Kitchen. Right. And this is um, an animal that really stinks. Skunk. And this is a, a pie, an Italian pie with Pizza. pepperoni. And this is not the ocean. It's smaller. Uh, the, the... Uh, like the bearing. Sea. Right. And this is um, blank and oil. It's a uh, salad dressing. Vinegar. Right. And this is you take out the trash or... Garbage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before I tell you about the trip, cologne, sink, skunk, pizza, all of those things have a very distinctive odor, yeah. as we all know. All right, <laughs> let's see what this is. This is a trip for two to Australia. You'll have seven days in Sydney. And wait till you see the harbor and the opera house and all that stuff. Wow. I don't, I'm not, Charlie, do they have a picture uh, that you're going to show at the end? Is that of the, of the Sydney harbor? You'll draw one in the meantime. All right. <laughs> uh, Nancy, you're trailing. You have a choice of the last two. The Pied Piper and give me a break. Give me a break. Okay. Give, give me, me a break. break. Uh, you want your partner to give. Nathan, describe these things that can be demanding. Things that can be demanding. Ready. Go. Uh, not a college, but a... University. Uh, you go and take out a... At the bank, you take out a... a Alone. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband and my wife is my... Spouse, mm -hmm. mate. Uh, now, aerobics or, or... Exercise, uh, yeah, calisthenics. Hard, yes. Um, uh, if I live in an apartment, my, I am an... I mean, I am a... A renter, uh... Yeah, my, uh, you, you are my... Landlord. Uh, you live in my apartment, you are my... Tenant. Uh, this is, uh, no, a small war, it's a... Battle. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, I do it every... Very good, very good. He did it. Drop more time. Where did it go? Where did it, where did it go? It flew by. Tenant was the one that... You know, 18 to 14, Kim, you'll receive on this. Mm -hmm. uh, Teresa, describe these people who lead other people. People who lead other people. You'll need 19. Ready, go. Okay, he had the Ten Commandments. Uh, Moses. Uh, a TV guide. Yeah. And uh, the head um, waiter in Red Fancy Maitre Maitre. And uh, the guy that's the head person on the train. Uh, conductor. And uh, this is in the Army, uh, not the... Major? The, the small, general? Smaller. Sergeant? Yeah. That's it. $25,000 try coming up. Let's go that's after that. it. Smaller is the... of extra time. Could you flip the uh, curtain off my monitor for me for a second? What's your, your gal's name? Caitlin. Caitlin. How old? She'll be three in August. All right. This, we'll dedicate this round of play to yeah. this lady okay. right here, who is a beauty. Uh... What is she got? A little balloon there, huh? Uh -huh. All right, Caitlin. Your mom's going to shine on TV now. Thank you. There you go. Yes. You know all of the, the rules and okay. stuff. Uh, I'd take just a half a second to remind you that you have a possible $32,400 in winnings. We should cover the screen again, gentlemen, please. Thank you. There's a, well, the reason, <clears throat> there's a television set over here, and it plays for when I'm over there, I can watch it. 
When you go over here, they throw a big sheet of black cloth over it, so obviously you can't read the answers. That's never happened yet. Boy, wouldn't that be something? Talk about nightmares. <laughs> We've had two things that have never happened. We've never had anybody sit in this chair and turn around and look at it by accident. We've had those things, no, seriously, we've had those things fly out of there and crash on the ground, make all sorts of noise, and these poor people are sitting there going, yeah. <laughs> You know, and obviously when something smashes the floor behind you, you have an inclination that that hasn't happened. All right, shall we win the money? Yes. I'll get out of here and be very quiet and okay. give you a moment to get your thoughts together. All right, folks, nice and quiet in the audience. We're going for $25,000. Here is your first subject. Go. His drill. Uh, things a carpenter uses. His. Um, things a mechanic uses. His. D his floss. Things a dentist uses. Um, I'm your fifth finger. What your pinky would say. Your pinky I'm your finger. first finger. Oh, what your index finger would say. What, I'm. Oh, what your thumb would say. Yeah. Uh, the flowers. The things grass. Things in a garden. Uh, the golden ring. Things that you grab. Um, uh, Morton salt. Things you shake, things that pour. Uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy. Things that are squeezable. Uh, your nose, your eye, your hurt eye. Uh, dough, the belly button, your belly things button. Things you poke? Yes! <laughs> the salute and I'll see you guys in the barracks. Well, welcome to Beat the Clock, the game where two couples play against each other for fabulous prizes, also play against our famous clock back over there. And I'll tell you, one of the couples has been making an awful lot of money around here and Jack Nars will tell us who they are. Right, Monty, our champions so far have won $23,000 and representing that team is Lisa Fields. Representing our challengers from Chatsworth is Marlene Back. How are you? Pretty good, a little nervous. Good. good to see you, Lisa. Good to see you again, these two girls. Uh, what, what do you do, Marlene? Well, I'm a nurse right now taking care of two small children at home. Uh-huh, but I see that you're missing a husband. Both of you are missing a boyfriend and a Ooh. husband over here. And do you know why? I haven't the faintest idea. Because we took them away and you'll never see them again. Oh. Would that be bad? Yeah. Oh. No, we know where they are because they're right back here. And we, when you see them, you'll know why we took them away from you. Take a look at this, will you? Take a look at this. Would you gentlemen, would you have, would you gentlemen come out with me out the center stage, just about over here, I would say, and stand one on either side of me, would you? I want you folks to see Christmas early this year. Ah, uh, yes. Would you stand right over here? Both of you look at the audience. I want them to see how you're adorned, and you're adorned in that way for two reasons. One, we want you to look pretty. And the other, we wanted you to have your hands hemmed in so that you couldn't operate them. Now, the gentleman over here on my right is Tim Norton, and this is Jerry Beck, and we'll get to meet you a little later, Jerry. Right now, let me explain the first stunt to you. You'll notice that in these costumes, you have hooks on either side of your chest, right? And the girls are going to produce some little hoops for you. You will take the hoop starting from a center position right down here, low, really low, and with your hands, work these hoops all the way up until you put a hook, one on each side, right? One hook on each side. You cannot take it and just put it up like that. You gotta work it up slowly, all the way up like that. Is that understood? Okay. Okay, now, the girls have hoops. I want you to stand together, get close together, and you have 60 seconds of this little competition, and let's see who can get two on the hook, one on each side, 
before the other. Are you ready? Can you can you grab it down there? You got it? Now you know how you work it up. Ready? Go. Oh, get that hoop for. Jerry, that's not bad. Oh, how did you do that so quickly? Oh, uh, I don't even know how to tell you this. <laughs> but whatever you did, you did it fast. You did it right, and you did it well enough to get yourself some money. The girls are going to take you out of these costumes. We'll take you all the way back to home base, and then we'll have a chance to meet and talk to Jerry Beck. Jerry, come on back over here, because you're coming back with $500 for the green team. <laughs> Put it right back on. Can you? Well, we'll know who you are, right? You know why you lost your tag? Half of it is over here. That's why. There you are. Now you're Jerry once again. Tell me something about yourself. What do you do? Well, I'm a Los Angeles police officer. I'm... <laughs> Will the boys see me uh, out there, I'll tell you. Oh, is that going to be something? And they see... Oh, yes. Yeah, undercover. Undercover. Right. Well done, Jack. Well, he's an undercover cop, right? <laughs> right. Oh, uh, I can't tell you. I just... Oh. That was unbelievable. <laughs> how, 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 long, how long have you been an undercover cop? Yeah, that undercover or the other? Undercover? No, the, other, the one you do for a living. Well, I've been a police officer uh, well, close to 15 years now. Oh, you're a veteran on the force, huh? Yeah, I'm getting close to retirement is what I'm looking for. <laughs> really? You're oh, too yeah. young to retire. You're just a babe. No, well, thank you, but 41 years old, I'm gone. Yeah. When you get to be 41, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. That's it. And That's do you have it. any plans for the future after that? Well, right now I'm a licensed general contractor, and I do both jobs at the same time. Mm -hmm. Seems to work out pretty well. Uh, <laughs> if the chief is listening, it's not moonlighting. It's just a, a little additional income, right? No, I already built his house for. Oh, I see. <laughs> in that case, in that case, everything is copacetic. And Marlene is home looking after the kids. You bet. Right. Uh, now our champions over here, Tim Norton and Lisa Fields, have just been cleaning up. Do you know how much money you won so far? $23,000. That's a lot of money. It, it's a lot of money. Good son. Good son. Good son. All right. And we're especially happy because this young man is a research uh, researcher. Biologist, and, yes. Yes, research biologist. And um, it takes a man a lot of time to make that kind of money as a researcher. <laughs> but it's good to see you make that kind of dough, too. All right. Are you ready to go into the next event? Because this, this one is going to be done by the Green Team. They earned the right by winning that competition. So Marlene and Jerry are going to work together to win another $500 if they can. This is a very interesting one. Come on over here. Because Lisa's just brought out a whole carriage full of beach balls. Now, I'll have you stand right over next to the, next to the uh, thing over here. And Jerry, come back over here with me. Standing right over here. That's it, right on that mark. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do, Marlene, is to get handing Jerry the beach balls. See if you can hand him these beach balls. And he keeps them all together. Stuff him so that he's holding that not one touches the ground. And in just a moment, I'll tell you how many I want you to do. But first of all, the time limit set for this stunt is on the clock. And you will have to perform this stunt in 45 seconds. Now I'm going to tell you how many balls he has to hold and have possession of before it touches the ground. None, none should touch the ground. Nine beach balls. Can you do it, Jerry? You bet. All right. Are you ready? Get set and go. Hand them to him and start holding him. Now he's got one under each arm. Now he's got one in his waist. Now he's... What is he going to do? She started from the top. She might have started at the bottom. Now she has, get your you have to get your feet together. Get your feet together. That's it. Get your feet together. Now one, two, three, four, five, six. He's trying. He's got seven. He's got. Now he's out of six. The one fell off the ground before. Here we go. Now I think we're, he's having a toe. Oh, now they're falling down. Close your feet together, Jerry. That's it. Sorry, you did. I tell you, Marlene, the secret is I think the mistake you made was starting from the top and working down. If you'd have started from the bottom, you might have got two under the legs. But when you started from the top, he was so cumbersome, he could only get one down there and the second one because you did get up to almost eight at one point. If you'd had two between the legs, you might have get, you know, one low and then one higher, you might have got nine. Okay, didn't do it. You don't get the 500. However, 
you get to build the chief's extra room behind the house. <laughs> we'll see what you do when we come back after these commercial messages and see if you can add to that $500. All right, Marlene and Jerry. <laughs> It's time to go all or nothing. Survey set. For Buzzer Casino. Let's see if you get lucky. It's a place where luck meets drama. Is it escargot? It is too. And fortunes are made. Oh, well, you'll have a good time. We're laying odds that a different game show every week. Never have you been so lucky. <laughs> will hit the jackpot. I'm a gambler at heart, especially when it's not my money to start with. <laughs> meet us on the Buzzer Casino floor weeknights at 10. Buzzer Casino. Feeling lucky? Oh, you bet. Well, we're back now, and uh, Lisa and Marlene are going to have a little competition head-to-head -head for another $500 payoff. And uh, here's what you're going to do, girls. You are going to uh, take an apple and put one apple on each pylon that you have right over here. Now, let me show you exactly what I mean. Here's an apple, there's a pylon, and it comes to rest. And what you'll have to do is you have four on your side, Lisa. Marlene, you have four on this side. Get four apples on four pylons and do this. And the winner, the one that gets four first, will be the winner or, of course, is leading when time runs out. Uh, I should also tell you that you're not going to do it as I did, just picking up and putting an apple on the pylon. That would be much too easy. No, what we're going to ask you to do is to get down on your hands and knees to start with. Then you will, with your hands behind your back, you'll bite an apple and carry it in your mouth to the first pylon. After, you don't have to get on your hands and knees after you start because then you can pick it up and race down there and race back. But of course, as you can see, the only way to get it is to get down on your hands and ease and bite it, because you can't use your hands. Is that understood? So we pick it up with our mouth, and pick it out of our mouth and run? No, 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 you pick it up in your mouth and carry it in your mouth, oh. and place it down with your mouth. Yeah. Then you come back and pick up another one in your mouth. At no time do your hands enter into this. You start at this end. That's right, put one, then a second, then a third, and then a fourth. This sounds like an interrogation by the police department over here. A cop's wife. Are you ready? Get set, go. She wants to do it. Here, right here. Stop the clock. Green tape is back again. Marlene asked all the questions, and she was the one who said, you mean I can't use my... Did you see how fast she did that? No time flat. Well, that means another $500 for the green team. They're up to 1000 bucks, And have qualified, and they've qualified to play another round, the two of them together, for an additional $500. And we're going to play that round. Marlene, you see that we've already equipped your husband with a little rain sheet over here so that he doesn't get too wet. So you can imagine there may be some water involved in this particular stunt, right? Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to tell you how this stunt works. Come over here with me. I want you, my dear, to stand on this mat. That's Marlene on the mat. And we'll have Jerry right over here behind this line. Now what you're going to do, Marlene, is you're going to be throwing some nice balls in the air and he's going to catch them. So can we get the material for this particular stunt? We are going to have the balloons. And these balloons, as you can see, are a little different because, as you'll notice, there's water in them. The reason for that is that you can get yourself a little bit of, uh, you know, an arc on this ball instead of just throwing the balloon up in the air, not knowing where it goes. As you can see, it goes up in the air, and you can throw it over to him. All right? And the way, the way you'll do it is you will stand with your back to him. Oh, no, I'll make it easy for you. So I'll let you stand facing him. Okay. I'll tell you why, because it's a little bit more difficult. He's not going to catch it in his hands. He's going to catch it with a new kind of a hat. There's a basket on top of a helmet. But before you put the basket on, let me point out that he's going to catch it in this basket. But the basket is ringed with tacks. And if he hits it on the tack, it will burst the balloon. He'll probably get a little soaked, too. But that's not the point. The point is, there is lots of room for a balloon to go inside. I want him to get two in the time that we have for you. And let's see how much time we have as we're putting his helmet on him. The helmet will protect him. The basket is where he'll catch it. You have 50 seconds, and I'm going to let you stand facing him and see if he can catch it without bursting him. Two in the amount of time. He can do anything he wants 
Are you ready? She says, she says she wants you to bend. But you can't get down your hands and knees. You can bend as far as you can, but don't get down your hands and knees. So if you can bend this far, that's okay with me. Are you ready? All right, Marlene, start pitching. Go. <laughs> Nice catching, Jerry. Another $500 for the green team. They now have $1,500. Okay. All right, you have $1,500, but the all-important game is coming up. And that, as you know, is our bonus shuffle. And the winner of that game will be the champions for the day and will go on to play the bonus round. Let's see if it's going to be the green team or our champions who are sitting there without any money today. We'll find out when we come back after these messages. Like vintage game shows on TV? Then you'll love them online. It's the all-new buzzerplay.com. Find times for your favorite shows, stream videos, and see what's trending now and in 1975. And stay connected with our fan newsletter, buzzerplay.com. Let's play online. Okay. We're back to play our bonus shot. This is a great game. And as you can see, our bonus shuffleboard is marked in money amounts that range from $300 all the way up to $1,000. And the team whose disc is touching the highest amount of money when this game is over will be the winner, receive that amount of money, and then play the bonus game for 10 times that amount. And that's where the big dough is. So if you can win the game and with, let's say, $900, you get the 900 and then you play for 9,000 in the bonus. Let me warn you players, as I always do, that if you push it too hard, going for that 1,000 and it goes off the end, that disc is out of play. Same thing if it falls off the side. So the end, the side are no good and neither is the disc that doesn't get as far as 300. Anything short of 300 will be taken off the board. Okay? All right, now I'll be the final judge of who's ahead. I, I want to also tell you that there's a possibility of not touching any money amount, in which case that would be a worthless disc. And I'll let you know if that's happening during the game. You'll notice that we have three green discs to two for the reds. The reason for that, the team that's leading going into this round will have the advantage. The green team is leading in money amounts, 1,500 to zero. Our champions have their backs against the wall. Can they make a comeback? We'll find out. Green team will go first and last. Ladies first in each case, so that means Marlene, you'll have the first throw, followed by Lisa, and then, of course, we're going to have Jerry and then Tim. Are you ready? And you'll decide who takes the last throw if necessary. Green team goes first. It looks like a very good throw. Touching 600. All right. Lisa, you know what you have to do. This is the one. It's at 600. Let's see what you're going to do with that disc. She winds up, she throws. Well, what she has done is while she's knocked the green off the board, she also has lost one of her own. And that's not going to help you because you only have one left after this. So, green team, you have two discs left and it's Jerry's turn to take a little pitch. Jerry goes. Is it far enough? All right, it's far enough to touch 400. Now then, Tim. This is the last shot for red. Your choice is sneak by him and get a higher amount, knock him off the board and stay on, whatever you want to do, but 400 is what you have to beat right now. All right, now, this is very interesting because the red team has a slight edge. They're both on the 400, but the red's in the lead. However, green team gets last shot. Who's going to take the shot for the green team? Jer? All right, now you know what's, what's at stake here. That's yours, that's his, his is leading. Now, this is the last shot of the day. What will he do? Will he try to knock off the red? What will he do? That 
was a very good shot, Jerry, by nudging your disc up ahead into the 500 mark. You have won the game. The green team gets another $500. We'll be playing the bonus round for 5,000 bucks right after these messages. Jerry and Marlene Beck, who are our new champions, are going to try and play that bonus round now. I guess you had $500 on that last win, so you're going to be playing the bonus round for 10 times that amount, or 5000 bucks. Now, this is the second day that we've tried this bonus stunt. The uh, former champions didn't manage to knock this one over. Let's see if you can. Now, Jerry, you're going to come over here with me. You notice over here we have this uh, wonderful, powerful vacuum over here that when I turn it on, it creates quite a bit of flow up here, right? Okay, now, when you hold this one up erect like this, and your wife will place one of those little styrofoam balls in the air over the jet stream, like this, getting it up right at the right distance, because if it's too high, he won't reach it. If it's too low, he'll blow it away. Now, when he does that, he is going to take this slowly down, keeping it in balance and in the air, right to that basket, and dump the ball in the basket. He comes back, gets a second one, and if he can do two, he is going to win $5,000 for your team. You don't start until I put this on. How many seconds do we have for this stunt? 45 seconds. And let me tell you, let me tell you that yesterday our champions missed doing this by just a second and a half. Let's see if you can do it. Are you ready? It doesn't start, and you can get the first ball ready. It doesn't start till I put the machine on. Ready? Go. Here goes your... It, you know, you had a lot of time to go if that first one had gone in. Of course, I don't know whether you got the second one, but you stopped right about here, and you thought that maybe if you went like this, <laughs> it would go, but it, no, you see, the ball doesn't go this way. The jet, it won't do that. You'll have to get it right over the basket and drop in it if you get a chance to play it again. All right, that means no $5,000 for the team, but of course, you have a lot of money. We're going to count it all up, and we're then going to say goodbye to our former champions right after these words. Up next, pressed for time? Don't worry, we got you covered. Monty Hall and Beat the Clock is next. Then, Alex Trebek hosts the ultimate history name game on Double Dare. Stay tuned. All right, we have to say goodbye to our champions, Tim Norton and Lisa Fields, who did such a majestic job here in the last few days and amassed a total of, I think, $23,000. And say goodbye to you. We're sending you off with a lot of money. Thank you. And I hope it's going to help you a lot oh, in yes, the future. It will. It will. Thank, Thank you, you for being with us. Great kids, Tim and Lisa. Wonderful having you on the show. And to our police officer and his wife, our new champions, Jerry and Marlene Beck, $2,000 in the bank and ready to add to that when we come back and meet another couple on the next Beat the Clock program. And maybe you'll get to play that bonus round again. So let's say goodbye to all of them and please join us for the next Beat the Clock Body Hall. Bye-bye, everybody. Departing contestants received. The Premier Glider bends over backwards to make cleaning under furniture a snap. Built tough for years of use from Premier and Dundee Towels. Take a basket of beautiful towels for every bathroom in the house. Get field flowers by Dundee, beautifully designed for today's fashion trends. And Flame Glow, innovative cosmetics for today's young woman. Flame Glow has beautiful lip colors, soft blushes, and creamy cosmetic pencils for lips and eyes. Plus, a radio and a supply of Niagara spray stuff. Restores butter that detergents wash away. For faster ironing, one of America's favorite spray starches is Niagara. And picnic time is easy with finger-licking good Kentucky Fried Chicken and an insulated bag to keep drinks cool. It's nice to feel so good about a meal. This is Jack Nars speaking for Beat the Clock, a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. Stay tuned for Hue, next over most of these CBS stations.
Blockbusters pilot show number two, tape date 10 2180. This is the battlefield for our game of speed and strategy. These are the letters which lead to victory as we invite you to play Blockbusters. And here's the star of Blockbusters, Bill Collins. And welcome to Blockbusters. Hey, Blockbusters is a brand new Goodson Todman game show that I am quite sure you are going to enjoy. Now, Blockbusters competes a solo player against a family pair. And the reason we do that is to see whether two heads are really better than one. Our solo player is Julie Sutton. Hello and welcome back, Julie. Hi, Bill. Thank Good you. Good to have you. Julie, uh, yesterday you had won $900 with memory service. Oh, yeah. And uh, at this moment, you are a little behind because the first game of the second match, uh, you're uh, behind now as our sister and brother team. They are Marsha Conrath and Bruce Evans. Welcome to you two. <laughs> Marsha and Bruce have won $250, and they have a one-to-nothing lead at this moment in this game, and they've uh, won the right to take a shortcut to victory. Now, let me tell you how that's going to work. Take a look over here to my right, if you will, and notice this board coming down. There are three sets of initials and a category. The category is the movies. Now, if you two, uh, which whatever one of you is going to play, either Marsha or Bruce, if you can solve all three, you will win another $250, giving you $500 and the match. However, if you miss just one answer, then the $250 will go to Julie and the match will be all tied up. Now you have the important decision to make here. Do you want to play it, one of you play it yourself, or do you want to put the onus on Julie and make her playing it know if she misses, you win the match? I think we'll take the pressure and try ourselves, Bill. Okay, you're going to try yourself. So the idea is to answer all three properly. If you succeed, you have won the match. If you miss just one, Julie gets another 250 and the match is tied up. Okay, ready to go? Now you see up there the initials, all set to go. The category is the movies. Which one of you two is going to play? Okay, Bruce is going to do it. Question one. Call out the initial or initials and then the answer, Bruce, if you know. This current hit movie takes place at the New York School of Performing Arts. F for fame, Bill. F for fame, you have won. <laughs> one miss and it goes to Julie. Second question. In Warner Brothers cartoons, this is frequently said by Bugs Bunny. W-U-D, what's up, Doc? You have two. Okay, Bruce, this is the big one. If you get this, you've won the game. If you miss, it's tied. This man won more Oscars than anybody in motion picture history. W-D for Walt Disney. You have won the game. <laughs> Congratulations. You have won the game, and in a moment, we're going to give you an opportunity to play Gold Rush. You have $500 to start with. And uh, which of you is going to do the playing, by the way? I think I'll try it, Bill. Okay, you're going to be the player. Okay, we want to thank you very much, Julie, for being with us. Thank you kindly. Thank you for having me. I had a great time. And enjoy your 900 bucks. Oh, I will. Okay, and to you, Bruce, come on over here. Here's your chance to win $10,000 on Gold Rush. Okay, big money time coming up for uh, you now, Bruce. Bruce Evans playing with his sister, Marsha Conrath, the brother-sister pair. Now, take a look at the board. To win the big money, you start at the left side, and you make a path connecting the gold to the gold. Hidden at the right end of the board are four amounts of money. If you win the game, Bruce, the space you end on will determine how many thousands you will win. Now, if you miss or pass, a block will go up, and you have to work your way around it. And uh, you have 60 seconds, so you keep right on going unless you block yourself in completely or time runs out. Okay, 60 seconds on the clock. Ready? Where do you want to start? Start with Y, Bill. With Y. Makes bread rise. Yeast. C-E-O-T-T-K. Right. 
a Richard Dreyfus film. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, DOI, Bill. Right. Jefferson wrote this document. Declaration of Independence, right. BF, Bill. A Very Cold Winter for George Washington. Valley Forge, Bill. One more. GRL. A Stripper. Gypsy Rosalie. You have done it. Caused a gypsy rose lead, but I understand because I have many times. Yeah. Uh, now, you won the game, and here's the space you ended on. The hidden amounts range from one to ten thousand dollars. Let's see how much money you have won. Okay, how much? Ten thousand dollars. Okay. All right. well, that makes that makes your total winning so far 10,500 bucks. Okay with you? You bet. Okay, let's see where the other amounts were hidden. Take a look at the other amounts on top the $5,000, under the five, three, and in between there, 1,000. You ended on the all important 10,000 bucks. Okay, you're gonna meet another solo opponent in just a moment. So rejoin Marcia and talk, what, talk about what you're gonna do with your money. We'll be back in just a moment to pick it up, but right now we have this one. Okay, we have, have a new solo player. Marcia Conrath and Bruce Evans, our sister brother team with $10,500 so far. We want you to say hello to, and our audience too, to meet Cindy Sanders. Welcome, Cindy. Hi, Bill. Solo player that you are. What have you been doing lately, Cindy, that you want to tell us about? Well, I'm uh, married and live out in Orange County, and I've been very active in my son's Pop Warner football. Uh-huh. Well, we wish you luck in the game. Oh, yes. And we Thank wish you. him luck in Pop Warner football, too. Okay. Let me explain how Blockbusters is played. Take a look over here at our Blockbusters board, if you would, please. Each of the initials on the board represents a one-word answer to a question. Now, the family pair must work their way across the Blockbuster board and connect white to white, as they just did there, as you see, to win. Our uh, solo player uh, can win by connecting top to bottom or red to red. There we score the L, the R, and the A, and finally the U, and there's a connection. It does not necessarily have to be in that order or configuration. You can work around depending on uh, how things go. We pay $250 for the game, $500 uh, for the match, and right now we're going to start the game out with the letter O. Everybody <coughs> ready to hit those buttons in front of you because the person who hits first gets the chance to answer. What O killed his father and... Yes, Bruce. Oedipus. Oedipus is right. You score the first one, <coughs> and you've captured a white down there. Remember that... We'll Bruce try and S, Bill. Are working. What'd you say? I'm sorry. That's okay. We'll S. try S. Okay. They're working across to connect the white to white. Everybody's eligible. You too, Cindy. Okay. What S stores grain? And that's Marcia. That's a silo, Bill. It is a silo, and that's another capture <laughs> for the white. And where do you want to go, Marcia? We'll go with A. Okay. The letter A. Ready, Cindy? Yeah, I'm ready. Marcia and Bruce. What A? is the last word of the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes, Cindy. Anthem. Oh, no. No, I, read okay. the, I repeat the question now, and Bruce and Marcia will get a chance to answer. What A is the last word of the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, Bruce. All. All is the last word, and you've scored and have captured another white. <coughs> hey, we got, a, we got a hot shot team with Marcia and Bruce working here. Uh, you have uh, that one, and where do you want to go now? We'll try the T, Bill. Okay, the T is what you're trying for. Get ready now, all I'm of you. Ready. What T was a rock opera? And that's Bruce. Tommy. Tommy is correct. I was going to say, I, I hadn't finished, but I didn't need to, and that's perfectly all right, as long as you're right. Was a rock opera about a pinball wizard. Now let's see where you are. One more. If you get this one, you have won the game in 250. Where? Do you want to go, he asks. Let's go with the B. Okay, here's the B. Get ready, all of you. What B is James Bond's favorite high-stakes casino game? That's Cindy. Baccarat. Baccarat is right, and you've scored, Cindy. And you've affected the part of rock there. I know, I know you understand the configuration. Where do you want to go now, Cindy? The letter W, please. The letter 
W, okay. Everybody ready? What W was the ultimate 60s rock festival? Cindy's first. Uh, Woodstock. Woodstock is right. Do you have another? <laughs> okay. Now, where do you want to go? Okay. Take a look at the board there. Okay. Letter H. Letter H. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, everybody ready, what H is a laughing mammal? That's Marsha. That's a hyena. It is a hyena, and you score that one and you get a right. Now, again, our brother-sister team, our family pair, are <laughs> one away from connecting white to white. Where do you want to go? D, please. You're going to D. And as you can see, if you get that D, you have made the connection. You get ready, Cindy? Here's the question. What D is the traditional 75th wedding anniversary? Yes, Bruce. A girl's best friend, Diamond. Diamond is right, and you have won the game. Congratulations. Okay, Bruce. And your winnings there. That's $250 on top of the $10,500. And you've won the first game. And now you're going to have an opportunity to take a shortcut to victory. Now, let's tell you how the shortcut to victory works. Now, you see coming in here this board, and there's a category there. The category is television. The category is television. There are three sets of initials. Now, let's take a look at the initials GM is the first one, AH is the second, and S is the third the category is television now whenever you now you have your choice of course you have to answer all three if you go yourself for this if you make one miss cindy wins however and then she gets 250 dollars and we have a tie match however the choice is yours do you two want to play it yourself or do you want cindy to play we're going to give cindy a shot bill okay cindy you have it remember cindy okay. you cannot afford a miss okay. i will read the question Okay. And then you give me the initial and the answer. Okay. Here we go for one. This blockbuster opened NBC's new season. Yes. Um, Shogun. Yes, Shogun yeah. is right. You have one. Very good, That's one. Here's the next one. This stout star presented mysteries. A.H. Alfred Hitchcock. Right. You have two. All right. Okay. One left. And if you get this one, Cindy, Greg and Marsha, or Bruce and Marsha will have made an error. Okay. You ready? Uh -huh. A co-star of Vegas. Let me see. Greg Morrison. A GM. GM. Greg Morrison. Okay. Good enough. That's close enough. Greg Morrison. You get yourself the $250, the match is all tied up, and we'll be back with Blockbusters to break that tie in a moment. But right now, would you watch this, please? Well, our match is all tied up with the $250 for our sister-brother family pair, Marcia and Bruce, and an equal $250 for our solo player, Cindy Sanders. So this is going to be the tiebreaker. This game will decide who gets a chance to go for Gold Rush. Okay, we're going to start this one with the letter A. Letter A. Everybody ready to hit the button if they know the answer? What A was the most beautiful man in Greek? Yes, that's you, Cindy. Apollo. No, it was not. I will repeat the question and then ask it of the team. What A was the most beautiful man in Greek mythology? And I think you won it, Marcia. That's Adonis. It is Adonis, and you... There. You have the A. Remember, you are connecting white to white, your opponent red to red. Where do you want to go? We'll go with the N, please. Okay, go. the letter N. Everybody eligible, get ready. What N is a resort in the south of France? That's Bruce. Time. Now I repeat it and then give Cindy a chance. What N is a resort in the south of France? Do you know, Cindy? Nice. Nice is nice, right. Then we have our red score there. Where do you want to go, Cindy? The letter G, please, Bill. The letter G, everybody eligible. What G is both a dog and a bus? Marsha. That's a greyhound. It is a greyhound, and white is good. White connecting from left to right. Where do you go, Marsha? 
We'll go with the T, please, Bill. The letter T, okay. What T, everybody ready, is played by flipping little discs? Cindy. Tiddlywinks. Tiddlywinks is right, into a cup, I was going to say. Red is working from top to bottom. Where do you go, Cindy? Okay, the letter W, please. The letter W. Everybody ready. What W painted his mother? That's Cindy. Whistler. Whistler is right, and you have a red. <laughs> Cindy, if you get one more, if you get one more, you will have won the game. Where do you want to okay, go? Okay, the letter D, please. I'm not surprised. You can block them, of course, Marcia and Bruce. Here we go for the game. What D is found... On Shirley Temple and Kirk Douglas, then Marsha gets the chance. Dimples. Dimples, right. You made a block. <laughs> Good block, Marsha. Where, where, where do you choose to go? The R. Okay, knowing that you want to uh, connect from left to right or white to white. Everybody ready? What R co-stars with Bullwinkle? Cindy. Rocky. Rocky, right. That's right. Okay. You got yourself back in that position. Where do you want to go? The letter L, please. Which means if you are successful, that's the game. Everybody eligible, here's the question. What L, what L is the president's mother? Cindy for the game. Time. Oh, I repeat it. What L is the president's mother? Marsha wants to answer. Lillian. Lillian is right. <laughs> <laughs> the game goes on, though. Not finished yet. Where do you want to go, Marcia? We'll take C, Bill. Okay, the C. I see what direction you're going in, connecting white to white. What C claimed the title of the world's greatest lover? Cindy. Casanova. Yes, and you captured that one. There you are again. Look where we are. Okay, okay, right now we're going to pause. I know this is a terrible time, but everybody take a deep breath. We'll be back in a moment. Right now we have a word for you. Well, right now we have the pleasant task. We have the pleasant task of everybody has earned something here. Our sister brother team, Marsha Conrath and Bruce Evans, I won a total of $10,750, and thanks to the two of you for being with us. Cindy Sanders, Cindy, in winning that game, you, you now have $500. Unfortunately, we have not the time now to give you a chance to play Gold Rush, but we will when we pick up again tomorrow. Cindy will be here playing Gold Rush for a possible $10,000. Thank you. See you next time on Blockbusters. Goodbye. <laughs>
Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to our game of knowledge and nerve.